You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. It's time for the Dragon Con Report, a podcast dedicated to help newcomers and veterans prepare for the upcoming annual convention in downtown Atlanta. With interviews, advice, and news from the pros and fans alike, be careful, you never know, you might actually learn something. Howdy, everyone, and welcome to the fourth episode of the 2020 Dragon Con Report. Uh, despite the current condition, the countdown continues. Uh, I'm your host, Mike Gordon. I'm pleased to introduce you to the rest of our station crew, starting, of course, with Director Mike Faber. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Howdy, sir. How, how are you? I'm surviving. You know, I haven't started climbing the walls yet. You know, I would think, you know, this is five weeks for us about of doing self-isolation. And you would think that we would be having, you know, maybe like issues like going, I got to get out. I got to get out on the road. I got to be somewhere. But no, I've been doing pretty good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Lots of alcohol. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the key. That's the key. Uh, and speaking of lots of alcohol, I guess that's a great segue. Darren Noel, of course, is here. How <laughs> dare you? How very dare you, sir? I I don't know why I'd make that connection. <laughs> Are you saying I might have a rep? Uh, I'm just saying. Oh, dude, re- you have a, such a rep. <laughs> I'm just saying that your recipe for pie includes more alcohol than I've ever drank in my entire life. I, I did, like, manage to nearly get a, like, I'm guessing... 250 pound dude <laughs> knocked out like a light last year so that was pretty that impressive was. on two cups two cups well, he had to be he so, had to be more than 250 and you still knocked him on his ass damn well you know you know uh this month we also my, my apple pie is actually going to be called <laughs> you thought you were straight <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, we also have the return of mary lou who mary Yay. I'm so glad to be back. <laughs> and we are glad to have you back. How are how are things with you? Uh, I'm I'm okay. I'm sort of getting used to, you know, the way things are going to be for the next little bit. Uh it's been a roller coaster of emotions, but we're we're on an upswing right now, so <laughs> it's all good. good. <laughs> uh yeah, and, and speaking of which, yes, of course the elephant in the room uh on the station whatever you call it um is the yeah. <laughs> the uh the the fact that uh yes current things being what they are um we are moving ahead uh there's no official word nothing's changed since the last time we came out with an episode so um and it probably won't be for a while so uh in this case we're going to continue on and you know we're we're just going to have a lighthearted discussion uh about uh cosplay and costumes at Dragon Con and we've got a great round table of guests joining us to do so uh they're all former uh folks from the show uh starting with Raven Raven welcome back good to be back how are things with you Oh, it's going, going well. Uh, I'm still having to go to work, so no quarantine for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, we also have with us Denchi, aka some people know him as Dragon Con Deadpool. Woo! How are you doing? How are you, sir? Um. Well, working in the fa- working. I work in the food industry, so I've been currently under quarantine. It's been about four weeks. And uh, I'm surprised I haven't jumped out of my window yet. <laughs> okay. It, it's so okay. I can just regenerate afterwards. So I'll be fine. So we're, we're going to use this uh, gathering as a giant release for y'all. Uh, so, uh, and we also have with us Joseph of Community Cosplay. Joseph, welcome. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, going to get some, uh, uh, pay some bills, so to speak, uh, do some messages real quick before we get into the discussion. Uh, we are a proud member of the ESO network. Be sure to check out the Amazon link at the top of the ESO network.com site. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase your stuff and it really does help us out a lot. Uh, we also have a T public store filled with all kinds of cool designs. Uh, there's a link for that at the top of the ESO network page as well. And, of course, the ESO Network now has a Patreon page. Uh, anything special going on with the Patreon page, Mike? There's always something special with the Patreon page, sir. Uh, just recently, we've added a bonus episode of the Flopcast 
from Kevin Eldridge and his crew, and they are doing a very special episode for it. Um, also, Mr. Mike Gordon himself has been doing a series of Western reviews of with Ashley Pauls. And yes. so that's been pretty fun to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's been great fun. We have about six or seven of those. I think I've got to release two more. Um, and that's been great. And uh, that show in particular is available for all levels of support. So even if you're just giving us a, a just a measly dollar, uh, we appreciate it. And there so is I'm, no such thing as a measly dollar. Every <laughs> we, dollar counts. <laughs> we, we do appreciate it so much. Um, and uh, that's our, our way of saying thank you. If you would like to leave feedback or comment on the show, please feel free to email us at dragonconreport at esonetwork.com. Uh, we did get a little bit of feedback from the last episode. And uh, one thing I wanted to just clarify is that uh, if you are interested in volunteering for DragonCon, of course, you want to go to the official website, find out all the information there. Uh, there is a event page called DragonCon Volunteer Central, which is official. That is officially run by the folks at DragonCon. There's also a unofficial group called DragonCon Volunteers. So one is official, one is not. Um, And again, so if you follow those links, it should be pretty clear. But if you have any questions, just let us know. And when in doubt, just go to the official site and and they'll help you out. So uh, I apologize for any uh, misinformation on the last one. There was a little, it was a little bit of confusion there, but uh, yes, one is official and one is definitely not. So um, all right. And that's about all the news that we have. Not really a lot of news or announcements. So uh, we just want to get really started and, and get into the discussion. Um, I think the first thing I want to, we're just going to talk about like cosplay stuff at uh, Dragon Con. And, and one thing I want to ask you guys uh, in sort of a segue into, you know, the fact that we're all holed up here, or most of us are anyway, um, has that helped you guys organize and get uh get ready for uh, making costumes Hell no Hell no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you never have enough time <laughs> i mean it's given me plenty of time to use the tiktok app but that's about it <laughs> yeah i downloaded tiktok this week um, does that mean i'm a fellow kid Ooh. yes Yes. <laughs> I'm a youth Mary, now. Mary, you're still going to be a kid always to us. <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, chums. How are you? <laughs> That's how I feel when I'm Mary. on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I'm just like... It's just our manic pixie Don't girl. understand. <laughs> uh, uh, Mary, I guess we'll start with you then. Um, as far as... Um, Fun times at uh, Dragon Con, of course, cosplay is a big part of that. When when did you start doing that? Was that right away? Like, when did I start cosplaying? At Dragon Con, yeah. Was at Dragon right Con. Th- um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I started cosplaying before I ever went to Dragon Con. So that was, that's sort of always been one of the main appeals of the event for me. Um yeah, I mean, I've been I've been cosplaying since. Well, I guess my first time was like, I don't know, like two thousand and three. But I've been cosplaying ser- like quote unquote seriously, like more than once a year since twenty eleven. So, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, I do. You guys know I bring like eighteen costumes to Dragon Con every year, and then wear most of them not all of them usually uh and a lot of costume changing most of my dragon con is spent either volunteering uh running around in a costume or changing from one costume into a different costume so (laughs) that's uh mostly the deal but um I do have to say I'm I'm less like this is going to sound so snobbish, but I'm like less impressed by other people's costumes these days. Like there was a time when I was like taking a photo of every costume I saw. And, you know, I think there comes a time for a lot of people who go to cons where it's like, okay, yeah, I've seen, you know, someone in a Batman costume like 80 times. It was like really super cool the first 20 times. And now it's like, cool, man, you know, great. Good for you. You look awesome, but I don't need to take your photo. Um, so I feel like a little bit of a Debbie Downer in that way sometimes, but if I got a drink in my hand, I'm having a good time. So <laughs> yeah, 
Well, and if you, well, if you took a photo of every cosplayer you found, your phone, your phone uh, memory card would be out within the like what first three hours of just. Farting? It would just explode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I love I, one of my favorite things about Dragon Con is that you'll see so many unique costumes that you aren't going to see other places. And if you're going to wear a costume that like isn't doesn't have a widely known audience or you don't think a lot of people are going to recognize dragon con is the perfect place to wear it because somebody will recognize your costume like somebody there will know and so my favorite is when i see something i've never seen anyone do before or from something i love but like most other people don't know about or whatever those are some of my favorite times cosplay wise it's anime it's anime. Oh yeah, it's obviously it's, it's anime. Gotta be anime. <laughs> Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel about anime these days. <laughs> uh, Hello, children. <laughs> not in a derogatory way, just that I don't know anything about it anymore, uh, and most of the people I do yeah. <laughs> that do are younger than me. Hey, so, hey, Mary, let me show you some Speed Racer and Battle of the Planets. Heck okay, yeah, I'll show you old anime. <laughs> Excellent. Kids today are like, "What's that?" Excellent. I love that. Uh, I definitely know what you mean about the, the photo thing. Cause, uh, when I first, you know, started going to Dragon Con and this is like, you know, 20 some years ago, uh, I, uh, I, it was the novelty of seeing all these people in costume and I was taking pictures of everybody, but within probably about five years, I kind of just downplayed that because not because it, the, 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 the outfits were less, uh, impressive just because I guess I get kind of used to it. I mean, at Dragon Con, every like, like you know, I think the more there's more people like not in cosplay, right? <laughs> so, so it's like yeah, more- and it's so hard too because because as a cosplayer, and I'm sure this isn't true for everyone who who does costumes, but so much of the thrill of it and um, you really feel like you get self. I get self worth when other people are like want to take my picture. You know, like that. Not that everyone like who's cosplays wants to have their photo taken that's certainly not true but it does make you feel like you did a good job like you accomplished you're recognizable people know who you are when someone asks for a photo it's like a compliment in itself and so not giving out those compliments quite as freely I I do dislike that but I've taken more to just in passing saying hey I love your costume you look great instead of taking photos that way I can help build other people up and, you know, want them to have a good time at the con and think that their costume is great. Cause it is, uh, without me having to take a photo that I probably won't ever look at again, because I'm the worst at that. And I don't look again at photos of my own cats. So it's not personal. (laughs) (laughs) It it is for your cats. Yeah. They hate me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just to show you, considering a lot of times, you know, you see a lot of costumes when you're moving through the hotel, so you don't really have time to stop and actually take a photo. But, ju- but you do true. have enough time to literally just say, "Hey, your cost, your costume's awesome," and you're on your way. I mean, that means a lot. That means a lot to people. It does for sure. I love when people. I don't like having my picture taken, to be honest. So I kind of rather people just be like, "Hey, I love your costume. Like, great." Or ask me to do. Like, one of my favorite things that cosplay is Ricky Bobby from Talladega Nights. And, like, when people yell the quotes from the movie at me, like, that makes my whole day. That's my favorite. Oh, exactly. So That's like, like that. It's like when I dressed up as the dude. It, it's like walking through, dude, dude, love the carpet. It completes the room. You know, all the quotes from yeah. the Lebowski and everything right. that people were yelling at me and everything. So you're actually confessing to that being a cosplay now? Shh. <laughs> it's an everyday cosplay there. <laughs> Uh, uh, Raven, I want to ask you. I want to start with you with this question because I know okay. uh, I think a a, a, um, a a sort of a misconception that I feel like of people who don't go to conventions or just see it from the outside think just a lot of people show up in costumes and they're nuts. Um, I don't think they really appreciate or know exactly well, how, much, no. how much work goes. Ninety percent wrong. Yeah, that's true. Um, how how much work goes into it? I mean, you guys are working uh a lot and you have multiple costumes it's not an easy thing and yet uh you know you guys are uh determined to do it what is the what what is the benefit um for me like anytime i finish a costume uh, i also do charity work so a lot of my costumes are made for that reason 
um, so I can go to hospitals and cheer up the kids. Um, but as far as for me, like the payoff is like seeing the kids smiling and like when people don't understand, they're like, oh, well, why do you dress up like this freak? And I'm like, well, see, I take my freak costume and I go to sick kids hospitals and I read to them or I bring a character to life for them to make them smile. So what are you doing? Disney magic. Exactly. <laughs> Taylor knows because he's uh, done charity work too. So. Yeah, I don't really get to do it much often because basically because of how my work schedule was. And then the charity people <laughs> told me, no, we can't bring Deadpool to uh, to a hospital. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I don't know why you say that, you know? Yeah. Deadpool is officially not appropriate, huh? Yeah, I mean, even in our charity group, like they say no Deadpool, and it's always really funny because like a lot of the the events we do with the charity groups, Taylor gets contacted personally to come in and get paid to to come do that event, <laughs> while we're just getting like we're just there for volunteering, and he gets paid to come do these parades and everything as Deadpool. <laughs> Is uh is that true? Like I would imagine that's true from other characters. Is that true for Harley Quinn as well? Um yes. yes. Okay. Anything Any... like anti hero villain, villain, yeah. Right. Or any yeah, character who's been associated with an R rated film or anything above a PG rating or something. Possibly PG thirteen, don't quote me on that, but yeah, right. any any character that can be seen as threatening, even though I've been told numerous times kids love Deadpool and I'm like well I, I gotta respect the I gotta respect the people in charge's wishes there have right. been other mediums that Deadpool has been child friendly like he he did appear in the Ultimate Spider-Man uh, Disney cartoon yep. that was more of a toned down version but that's the version that I personally love portraying I don't I don't go in with like toy guns and everything I rarely unsheath my swords I'm mainly just Puns, wisecracks, jokes, and all sorts of stuff. I guess there's not a big call for the Punisher then for those no. events. No. <laughs> I've no, actually been not. forbidden by my group of friends to cosplay as the Punisher because they know which route I'm going to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's got to be another plus as far as Dragon Con goes because I'm guessing, you know, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, making a jump here, of uh, uh, a guess here that that um, no no costumes are too outrageous for Dragon Con. Exactly. Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get it. We'll get there. I, I, think I, I think I would be scared if I saw that costume. <laughs> yeah, I I don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm trying to think in my head if there's any time I said, "Whoa, that is just too much," uh, at Dragon Con, but um, I don't think so. I think, uh, I th yeah, I don't know if that's possible, especially uh, at night. With Dragon Con, it's pretty much fair game. But, like, if you were to go to, like, Momocon or, like, AWA or anything smaller, it would be very, it has to be family-friendly type deal. Like, you wouldn't be able to do, like, the super risque costumes. Uh, uh, Joseph, what about you? What uh, what are some of the rewards that you feel uh, as uh, cosplay in general, or just at Dragon Con? Um, I mean, for for me, it goes two ways. Like, if uh, yeah, we have like the full spectrum, anywhere from like a couple thousand dollar costumes to stuff that costs like thirty dollars to put together, and it, both sides, you get different types of satisfaction from it, like the the bigger costumes is just people, you know, appreciating the, the work that went into it and, and just, you know, wanting their, you know, your picture, stuff like that. The, the funny ones is just, just seeing the, the people's faces and their reaction to it. Like, uh, like last year we had the bad bananas and people were freaking out. They, they, they thought it was like the funniest thing. Like, cause it's, it was funny. It was like a, a pun and they can just like, they could take their pictures like flipping off the camera like we were so it, you know it brings out that like just just what people people are looking to do at dragon con and just it's, it's something funny same thing with the aliens guy like they just 
freak out with it and they just like love to, to do the hand gestures and that's 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 the reward for me it's just making people laugh and just forget about the craziness that's out outside of dragon con or wherever we go with it and and do you guys have i think you do i, I think you're pretty sure you do i mean mary mentioned that there's a like you know a, a particular costume that she tries to bring uh is there certain characters that you try to bring every year uh the for the most part the aliens guys since uh since i brought them the first time and and everybody just loved it and everybody asked you know oh are you gonna bring it back i couldn't find you last year i mean so it's i just made it and it's easy to carry too it's just like it's a wig and some shorts like it's it's not anything super hard to do um so i always bring that one um but other than that, we we try to switch it up and, and do something new every year if we can. Uh, if not, we try to you know update or change something on the the older ones that we have and and at least have something. But but the staple right now for for the most part is the aliens guy and and the bad bananas because everybody also wants to see those again. And we might have more bananas, so we'll see. <laughs> yes, we have some bananas. All right. Bananas. Um, uh, as uh, do you kind of feel like sometimes you might be locked in and like, Oh, I don't really feel like doing that one or whatever. I like, oh, I got to make sure I bring that one again, even though I kind of want to move on. Uh, yeah. And it actually happened last year. Uh, I was going to do the, uh, Baltasar brat again from, uh, despicable me. Um, my wife, she, she found a, a big inflatable minion costume. So she wanted me to do <laughs> She wanted to go in that, and uh, she wanted me to do Balthasar Brad again, and and I, we took it, we took everything, but, um, uh, I wasn't really like feeling it last year to per se, and and the bananas, we, we were having so much fun with the bananas. She even said like, you know, screw that, let's just do that again and just walk around and flip people off. So I was like, okay, um, so, <laughs> so so that's what we did. Like we just left the uh, the whole Despicable Me thing you know in the hotel room and we just put on the banana suits again and, and went around so you know that's one of those where i took it but didn't really plan on like if i if i didn't put it on it wasn't going to be the end of the world for me um the aliens guy i would have like been a little bit depressed if i couldn't use it uh and and darren i would imagine that uh i mean the the wonder warrior is something that you're like known for right I, I think so yeah i bring that so so year. yeah i mean but i mean i think <laughs> i think you've mentioned before that you try to update it right oh uh, i'm always working on that costume it seems there's always like new accessories to put with it and try to improve it year after year after year and i'm about to break down uh this year i was going to start working on a new um chest plate piece for it but that's kind of gotten uh, off to the side right now because getting a hold of a, a decent leather worker and working with them is kind of not possible right now, considering I'm not near anybody. I have to travel and, and, you know, can't do that right now. But if we do turn this thing around and we get there, I'm so working on a new chest plate for Wonder Warrior because I, I think that I want my Golden Eagle to be a little um, bigger. So kind of to take away from the... Uh, the stomach <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah. the, the wonder gut is massive right now you mean the corona 15 i'm, go I'm going to name it kevin <laughs> <laughs> well you're not so, gonna name you it know. kyle no i'm not gonna or name chad? it kyle no 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 not chad god no i've known too many chads no 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 chads oh god <laughs> bad flashbacks okay so but yeah that, that would really be i would i would start my planning now i would not do anything until august 1st <laughs> because that's kind of tradition yeah. i need that pressure to get onto it plus with the way my work schedule is i'm really busy between april and july 1 so i really don't have time to work on anything hobby related that's going to be so intensive i need to work on it pretty much every night or every weekend because i'll be working through the weekends typically um, so it's, it's one of those things where it just kind of gets moved to that point in time. And it's like, okay, I've got like six to eight weeks to get everything ready for this. So let's start working on it. So, but yeah, Wonder Warrior, I bring, um, I bring a couple of, um, hungover costumes now. 
things that are easy to put on. You got to wear a shirt and a pair of pants or shorts to leave your room anyway. So um, I've got McCoy that I wear when I'm hungover. <laughs> with shade. And uh, cause that's easy. That's black pants and a Starfleet shirt done. <laughs> you don't even have to. How long have you had that? I don't think I've ever seen no, that. Costume. I, haven't seen I never it. see you at the con, remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, but I don't even think I've seen a picture. Yeah. It, it's my hungover costume, so no one gets to see it because I rarely <laughs> leave the room when I'm hungover. <laughs> but um, I also I added Riddler a few years back, which that was fun to wear. Oh, fun. That was good. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's just doing what I can because I'm not. The, the strongest with my sewing so i try to find things online that i try to repurpose them into what i i want them to be at a con so i am getting better with like fabric paint and alterations and looking at things what can i take away from this to make it look like what i need it to look like and i think that's kind of the creative side of of cosplay beyond someone who can actually build a costume from the ground up so I think uh I think casual costumes uh mm-hmm. are are pretty common now. Uh, I'm pretty guys... much in favor of. <laughs> yeah, they are. Do you, do you, <laughs> all right, do you, dude. <laughs> do you guys have all that have like uh like a like a more of a casual costume that you can just like slip on and and relax in? Every day, every day. It, it's <laughs> it's funny you mention that um Mike because I'm actually in cosplay right now. <laughs> we we yes for those people who can't see raven she actually uh is in costume yes i am in costume that's awesome mm-hmm. yeah i was yeah. actually recording tiktoks earlier so i'm ah, in costume there you go. <sighs> i don't think i actually have anything that's more casual wear considering 90 percent of my entire uh, collection is all spandex uh I think the only thing I probably did that would be considered casual was when I uh, is when I actually found the meme of Ultra Instinct Shaggy, and I found a gray wig and a green T-shirt and wore that with a with a long pair of brown pants, and I was Ultra Instinct Shaggy. I think Shaggy qualifies as a casual costume. Oh, okay, that's yeah. that's one then. He's a he's a casual guy, so yeah. <laughs> So so now I'm making a note. Uh, apparently, wearing spandex is not casual. <laughs> See, I, I, I think spandex is just like it's like a super tight onesie. <laughs> it is not exactly because you have to consider. Well, for a guy, you also have to consider the dance belts, which isn't very comfortable. Oh, there's that. Yeah, it's not comfy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that. That is the one thing about being a guy that really stinks in cosplay is because you have to, if you're in a really recognizable superhero shirt or costume outfit kids know who you mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. and little kids don't have a lot of impulse control in a big over simulating environment like a con and so they sometimes run right at you and their skulls are right at crotch level <laughs> yep so if yep. you don't if you don't have a block move ready you're 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 going to be in some pain just well, saying right so the worst part is, is especially well, a couple of times when I've when I've uh, I've posted pictures or funny story. I found this one photo of me as my detective Pikachu on Reddit, and I liter- and they literally nice picture a couple. They love my costume. I was expecting to find some really good comments, but no. I look at the Reddit comments and it's all talking about. This guy's not wearing a dance belt. This guy's not wearing a dance belt. This guy's not wearing a dance belt. <laughs> I, I'm like, I was wearing a dance belt. What are you trying to tell me? Good for you. Good for you. That's what they're saying. Good for you. Oh, mister. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The Obviously, I'm paid were hilarious. I, I think it's just one of those things you just have to deal with. Uh, you know, Dragon Con after dark. I don't wear a dance belt. <laughs> uh, it's after dark. Maybe. I don't think a lot of them wear dance belts after dark. No, nope, no. Nope. I, I think at that point, after like eight o'clock, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's like that uh, sound after the Renaissance Fair closes and all the women loosen their corsets for the first time. That sigh. <sighs> ah, all, all the guys going to their rooms to take off their dance belts. Yeah. I, I just find it ironic so. because at night is the time where you're probably out dancing. 
Well, yeah. So I would think a dance belt would be <laughs> for that, but not really. Uh, no, the dance belt is not for that. So so gets, unless dance. you want to give yourself a super chafed wedgie or something. <laughs> so it kind of gets confusing when parents aren't being very responsible because I've seen a few times little kids out wandering around the very top of the, of the Marriott at like one in the morning. Like little, little yeah. kids. And I'm, and I'm kind of like face palm, like, why aren't these kids asleep? <laughs> they had too much pie. <laughs> Applied by Darren. No. 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 <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> uh, uh, are there any sort of uh, stories or things that you are that have happened at Dragon Con in particular to you guys while you're in costume that uh, uh, that uh, you'd like to share? God, I don't know, like a million, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Real quiet. <laughs> I can't mention. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Um, I'm yeah, well, remember. they're not PG. Most <laughs> I could, I could, I could start. Yeah. I can, I can start. I can start. Um, well, uh, is there like a preference on this? Like, does it have to be like a certain rating? Like, can it be like PG thir- like a PG thirteen? And- PG thirteen is fine. Uh, yeah. Okay, it, we so, are we are a Dragon Con report. So okay, so yeah, so um. <laughs> last last for like two years ever since like ever since like 2017 i've gone on this like huge weight loss i used to be 315 pounds but now i'm down to at least maybe you know 240 it's it's been a big change congrats um so last year i actually felt comfortable enough to actually do the uh the bunny hutch so i actually dressed up as uh Nice. As a Chippendale Hercules from Disney. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and, I'm uh, impressed. I was palling around with with my buddy who was a uh, Chippendale Gaston. So oh my we god, were that just, was Brad, right? Yeah, that was Brad. Um, okay. We were just wandering around the Marriott. You know, I was in. I, I had my Hercules wig on, my little bow tie, my suit cuffs. My Hercules belt, a speedo with the word "hero" written across the ass, and then my <laughs> like and then my do. sandals. And that's all I was wearing. So we're wandering around the Marriott. I think it's like two in the morning. Everybody's drunk, like usual. So we uh-huh. got this. Po- we had we asked for a pose. Some some chick was like, "So my boss wants to get a photo of what Dragon Con's really like." So she <laughs> asked us to pose. And so I did, I, I did the, uh, I did this pose where I literally just stuck my butt to the camera. I don't know exactly who it was, but all I remember was hearing someone go, yeah, that's awesome. Someone just randomly just slaps my left ooh, butt that's, cheek that's and leaves me $5 ooh. in my belt. Ah. Nice. <laughs> Way I, to I, go, I'm, dude. I'm sorry. That I'm- I'm sorry. That's how we met. <laughs> Way to go, man! <laughs> I don't know who it was, but I now have that five dollars framed. Oh my oh, god! Oh, sweet. Not Great a problem in case there. Of emergency. <laughs> in case of emergency. Oh, that's funny. In case of dance belt replacement. <laughs> hey, those dance belts aren't cheap. I'll tell you that right now. Really no, not. no, they're not. It's worth it. No. Buy a dance belt. That, that's an investment. I think that's why a lot of guys don't think about doing it. It's like yeah, I literally have three of them. It is I have worth three it. of them. It one really in is. case I forget one. One in case I lose one. That is true. <laughs> Attaboy. Wow. You never know what's going to happen at Dragon Con. You might lose something. True. Yep. You might lose something. Yep. That's truth. <laughs> uh, anyone else, Joseph? Do you have a, a Dragon Con tale? Uh, I mean, mine isn't as risque, but um, <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> it doesn't have to be, dude. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was uh, last year. It was actually, pretty, at least to me, it was pretty funny. Uh, we were volunteering. We were in the uh, uh, artist alley, and um, so I'm not in cosplay or anything like that. I'm just yeah, volunteering. And uh, this guy comes in, uh, and he's cosplaying the aliens guy as well. And he doesn't know who I am, of course. Uh, he's, I'm like, I told my wife, I'm like, I need a picture with him, of course. And uh, so I'm like, hey, can I take a picture with you? He's like, yeah. But he's like, you know, you have to do the hand gesture. I'm like, I think I got this. 
Um, <laughs> I put my hands up and that's, and he went his on his way. I was just like laughing the whole rest of the day. I was like, this is so awesome that other people are doing it. Uh, and he had no clue who the hell I was. So um, that was pretty funny. But that's, uh, that was the, the most noticeable. That one and, and the, uh, while we were doing the bananas last year, um, most of the people that were like really naughty and like, you know, sticking their fingers out and being like really rude were like older ladies. Um, like you would think they would be appalled by our, you know, gestures and stuff like that. But they were like, oh, can I take a picture with you? And they would just like, you know, start like sticking their finger out and stuff like that. And that was like, I, c- I couldn't stop laughing the whole time. Like it was, <laughs> it, it was so worth it. Huh. I guess sometimes you just never know what uh, a certain costume is going to bring out in someone. Absolutely. That, we discovered that first Uh Raven, what about you? Um, none of my stories are like that. Um, Give I it think, time. No. No. No, um, <laughs> no like uh, one of my most memorable stories from, la- well, I last year was uh i did my first dragon con panel for descendants and like i went dressed as mal which is maleficent's daughter and like all these kids were just like so enthralled Uh with this and then i think i went outside at one point and these two little girls were dressed as mal and evie and they saw me and they had a fit and it was this thing like they were just like oh my god mom look it's Mal and I'm just like oh my god I love you (laughs) it was cute that is cute that's that and I imagine that happens quite a bit too yeah it does like that's the best part about cosplay for me is like these kids seeing me as these you know really cool female strong characters and they're just like oh my god it's actually her it's great that's pretty cool. Uh, Mary, do you have one among the millions? Oh, man. I don't know. Um, do you have any that you remember? Uh, that is the better question. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you might you can tell fragments of, of a few others, and we can just put the pieces together. Yeah, we may have to, to be honest. Um, <laughs> no, I was just, I was just thinking. It's like an, a good episode of Lost. <laughs> yeah, that's basically my cosplay life. Uh, um, I guess two kind of like short but funny ones. Um, last year we were in our Talladega Nights costumes and we ran into a group of, um, uh, costumers who are doing Anchorman, which is like a different Will Ferrell movie. And they, I mean, we were excited, but they were like so excited and like started talking about us. Like they were covering us as like the news show, they were really excited and it was came out with some funny photos. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, we did our Porgs from Star Wars and we ran into, I was wasted. So this was probably not as funny as I remember it being, but we ran into some guys dressed up as Borg from Star Trek. And so we got photos with Borgs and Porgs and I just like lost my mind because I thought it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh i have one more and i was not in a costume for this but i have to tell you about the coolest costume i saw at dragon con last year and it was those two guys dressed up as uh will smith and bill pullman from independence day i lost yes. my effing mind looking at those two i got asked them if i could have my photo with them which i don't think i've done probably since like my first dragon con like to get a photo with somebody i like i never gave that many about anyone's costume but that totally made my whole weekend like everything else could have not happened and it would have been fine because that was the coolest thing that ever happened to me in my whole life nice i'd rather do that than get another photo with david Tennant. Ooh. Wow. Oh. Wow. just to tell you how exciting wow. was for me bless for me there also for the it's record quite a boast right there for the record, wow. uh, Will Smith and Bill Pullman did not charge me a hundred dollars. <laughs> Someone There's else that. who shall not There's be named that. did. <laughs> um, have any of you guys had celebrity encounters while in costume? Yes, yes. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Does it count if you paid for it? Um, sure. Uh, well, <laughs> that's so there loaded. The there, that's so loaded. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll start with you, Mike. Well, I was not dressed in costume, but I ran into a celebrity who was dressed in costume, actually. I uh, was, it was probably like like the third or fourth year I'd gone to Dragon Con. And basically I was down in the vendor room when it was still in the Marriott. And all of a sudden this guy came up to me and William was like off looking at stuff. And this guy dressed as V from V from Vendetta walked up to me and started talking. And it's just like very friendly. And he was like, oh, is this your first Dragon Con? You know, I'm here with my daughter. And, you know, he just started talking and just talking about, he says, yeah, I do some, you know, I dabble in special effects and stuff. And, you know, I play around and stuff. And that's very cool. Did, you know, do it. And we talked for almost 20 minutes about stuff. And, you know, I'm thinking about starting a podcast, blah, blah, blah and ended up finding out like the next day that it was adam savage mm. wow. that i was talking to for <laughs> that's him. awesome yeah he was super nice too it was just it was totally awesome yeah he is in, he is famous for getting into costume and 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 sort of just wandering around cons mm-hmm. yeah i saw him at dragon con one year as uh captain jack sparrow oh yeah i remember seeing him get made up i saw it on he did a YouTube video for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's not an easy one to pull off. No, it's not. Yeah. Here, have some pie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the traditional Dragon Con greeting. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, I have. I have two. Um, one of them, uh, we were in our uh, Gears of War uh, cosplays about two, three years ago, and the uh, one of the voice actors from uh, the game, from Gears of War, uh, was at the convention, uh, Carlos Ferro, and uh, he he went out and took pictures with us, like, at the actual Gears of War photo shoot, and he stuck around and talked to us. That was pretty cool. Like, no charge. He just wanted to hang out. Um, so that was really nice. And then last year, uh, we were going back up to our hotel room in the... Uh, Secret elevator, that's not the main elevator. I'm not going to disclose it, but um, going up to our hotel room and we were with all these people and uh, I I want to say they were from, uh, uh, it was a group of guests from either Babylon 5 that was there or Battlestar. One of those shows that I really don't follow, so I didn't recognize them. And one of the people that was our roommates, like the whole time was like pale and sweating. Uh, almost and we walked out and he's like dude do you know who was in i'm like no because i have like these shades on and i'm like painted yellow and i look like a banana i i i don't know who's who and he's he told me who it was and they were really pleasant they were like you know how's your con everything like that they laughed and we laughed and parted ways and that was it but they were really nice that's cool yeah, that's cool most uh, most encounters that i've heard at dragon con with, with celebrities are are pretty nice I, I know that most of them, uh, some of them do like to to, to hang out uh, with uh, and see what's uh, what Dragon Con is all about, which is not something you can say for many other cons, I think. Well, most cons wrap up at 7 p.m. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Uh, any more other celebrity sightings or encounters? Uh, just the Barrowman groped me in my Wonder Warrior outfit, which well, is nice. That's that's the one we have to. That's I the mean, one we have to end with. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but Barrowman groped everybody in in line for that's a photo true. Of them, yeah, so it's fine. I, yeah, <laughs> I think uh... it wasn't special. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, as far as um, now, like sort of, you know, celebrities, as far as comic celebrities, guys, I know that most of you have participated in the huge uh, sort of photo shoots. Yeah, for sure. Since they started having the more Con. official. And some of those have, you know, like I know parties have Harris chilled shows out. up for some of those. Yeah. I, I mean, they I still happen. James but... Gunn showed up for one of those, uh, a Marvel one a few years ago. Um, yeah. I was a part those of that mo- one. What's that? No, no, I was in that one. Yeah, that must have been pretty that, awesome. That, it was. 
Um, uh, so tell me what the, the, the group photo shoots are like. Uh, they, they look like they're um, organized chaos a little bit, but yet they're so amazing once you see the final result of them. Yeah, it's it's a lot of people on very small steps. I know for like the giant DC and Marvel, they always split it into subcategories and then send you to different step locations. That way it's not so congested. But then we do like one big group photo all together. Um, last year, I decided to um, take a break from cosplaying to take my friend Corey to his first big Marvel shoot. And they were doing like Spider-Man and everything. And while I was standing off to the side, letting him have his moment, because I've already done it like a hundred times, um, the props from uh, the Avengers was there on set, on location. They had brought, the prop maker had brought Loki's staff and the Infinity Stones for everybody to hold and see from the movies. And actually, George was at that shoot, too. Oh, right. Was, yeah. yeah. He was at that shoot too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> are they? Uh, I. Uh, are they... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, absolutely. Go ahead. Um, I was gonna say, like, I, uh, uh, I did the. Uh, I was in the Marvel shoot when uh, James when James Gunn did. It was the year of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, that was my first big photo shoot at Dragon Con. Uh, I remember being on the stairs for approximately four hours. It's that's how long yeah. they kept us in position. Four hours long. I was not able to wear my Deadpool suit for the remainder of the convention because the minute I was able to take it off after baking in the sun, <laughs> it, it sounded like like I literally was able to crunch it all in a ball and throw it against the wall, and it did that whole splat and just <laughs> slowly <laughs> fell down the wall and onto the ground. Yeah. It was still fun, just very, very, very hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the sun beats down on those steps. Mm-hmm. So if you commit to that shoot, you need to be well hydrated before. Well, I was committed. I, I just didn't expect four four hours. <laughs> actually yep. actually they changed it. Those big shoots happen at night now. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. That's good. Like last year, I know it was like later in the day going into the night that they were doing that big shoot and the big DC shoot the year before was at night. It was at like eight o'clock at night. Oh, see, that's, that's way better. Mm-hmm. Way better. I think that works out for a everybody. Lot, they're I, a lot more pleasant. Yeah. I, I know they wanted to use yeah. that area to help with uh line management and yeah. space. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, I, I know that, you know, there's a DC one, there's a Marvel one. And then there's, as, as Raven said, there's some, some subgroups of that. Like, I think there's one that's all Batman related. Yeah. Uh, one all Avengers related, that kind of thing. Um, uh, are there other big group shoots besides that are like those two that are comic related? Do they do that for like, you know, Star Wars or Star Trek or anything like that or anything? Yeah, they do have a big Star Wars, like it's like Sith versus Jedi shoot. And that's also pretty big. And then we also have our big Disney photo shoot, too. Oh, Disney. That's cool. Yeah. Disney's we had one last fun. year. It was a Space Force photo shoot. That was really funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, I, I enjoyed that one a lot. It wasn't a whole lot of people, but a lot of people like, like-minded. So we were all hilarious looking. Um, right. So, yeah, that was, that was, mm-hmm. that was one of one of two photo shoots that I've done. I've done the Gears of War one, and then I've done the uh, the Space Force one last year. That was pretty fun. When uh, the first few years I started going to Dragon Con, I used to hear about uh, these uh, massively crazy parties that the Klingons, uh, the <laughs> Klingon group would give. Um, uh, and uh, I actually um, went to one of them one year. Uh, but my question is that since um, uh, there are there are very few Klingons at Dragon Con anymore, so is there a particular group of costumers or cosplayers that are, have continued the wild party or wildness? Uh, is there a particular group that's more wild than any of the others? I do know that the um, the Star Wars group has their giant party. It's like 
uh, the last something uh, on Alderan or something. And I want to say it was the year before last. They had it like in the lobby of the Hilton and like the DJ was there playing really loud music and like everybody was just congregated, drinking, dancing and lights everywhere. It was really huge. <laughs> I'd imagine just alone with the 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 Star Wars like the five the official five oh first yeah. people like that's huge that contingent is always massive at Dragon Con. Then you have like mm-hmm. all the other Star Wars cosplayers as well. I mean that I, I mean right. I can only imagine that's huge. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, as far as uh, anybody else of note, no, there's no uh, that's that tradition hasn't continued, or is it just on the on the hush hush? So. Well, I mean, parties happen. <laughs> parties happen you know, like part of the uh, the con. Mm-hmm. They have the parties scheduled, right? Uh, that's where you'll find last party on Alderaan for sure. That's it's it. on yeah. the Dragon Con schedule. Yeah. But the hotel parties have calmed mm-hmm. down a lot. Um, parties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Back, they, they happen, but it's more like informal <laughs> gatherings now. It's not loud music with like a DJ. No, or none at all. It's way more controlled mm-hmm. now a lot of the hotels i i think didn't like that people were bringing their whole all their alcohol in to serve to people in the hotel and it wasn't subtle so they cracked down on it for that reason and noise complaints from other people sleeping in the hotel you know th- there's all kinds of reasons why room parties have kind of not died off completely but they're way more subtle than they used to be yeah for sure i guess uh, the klingons ruined it for everybody Nah, don't blame the Klingons. <laughs> All that stuff must have been before my time. I want to go to a Klingon. They party were, uh, yeah. By the t- they know how to party. <laughs> uh, by the time I, I will be honest, by the time I went to one, it was not all that it was cracked up that I'd heard. Uh, it didn't live up to the reputation. So I don't know if they ever did. If they would, maybe that was the only reputation alone. Uh, but um, my understanding was is that the first. I would say five to ten years of Dragon Con, the the Klingons uh, were the ones that uh, were really party partying, uh, party hard Klingons. Um, uh-huh. But uh, well, cool. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I guess in order to wrap up, uh, I just reach out to everybody um, and just tell me what um, you know. What is it about costuming, cosplay, Dragon Con? that uh, that's that serves as a as a magical experience for you what is it like an overview of like the reasons that you do it or um you know the fun that you have um uh you know especially since uh, you know i mean there may be an option not to do it this year and of course that's going to bum us all out but mm-hmm. um what is it about the 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 dragon con makes it so special for for the costume experience uh raven we'll start with you um, I mean, I know everybody says this, but it's honestly like a big family reunion. Like I do some of the same photo shoots every year, like the Teen Titans photo shoot that George always comes out to. Um, and like seeing all my friends that are from out of state or out of the country uh, come down for Dragon. Um, I think it's also a lot of the experiences that you get to have that you can't have anywhere else and feel like a closeness with all these millions well not millions but like thousands of people um I know like one of the biggest things for me last year was I had decided to skip the big DC shoot to do the Umbrella Academy photo shoot and (laughs) it was a it was really cool because um I got there and I got to see like you know how much I love Gerard Way (laughs) I get to see all these people dressed as his characters from his comic book and uh, we ended up not having a photographer, so I volunteered to step in as a photographer when I wasn't in the actual photos. And uh, we did a video of everybody dancing to the song that they danced to in the in the show. I can't remember what the song is. And we recorded it, and like they were just dancing, and I'm like, you know, you guys, you need to sing in the video. And one of our people had posted that to Instagram and the official uh, Umbrella Academy Netflix show shared it on their story and Gabriel Ba and Gerard saw it and commented on it and it was like like you can't get that anywhere else like those kind of experiences only happen at Dragon Con 
<clears throat> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Mary, what about you? Yeah, honestly, kind of the same stuff. I, um, for me, cosplay and conventions are really all about the social aspect. Um, I do really enjoy cosplay and I, I love, I was about to say I love panels, but that's a lie. I never go to panels. Uh, <laughs> uh, I love that the panels exist and they're there for people who want to go to them. Uh, but more than any of that, I love the people I get to see. Um, there are certain people I don't ever see except at Dragon Con. Um, and I have a lot of really close friends that live out of town and I do get to see them, you know, maybe once or twice, uh, outside of Dragon Con every year, but, um, like you really get to spend time with them at the con. It's like going on a vacation with your best friends for a whole week every year. It's like kind of baller to be honest. Uh, and it's just a week for fun. It's just so fun. <laughs> like, I know that's so lame, but it's just like, you don't have to do all the regular crap that you have to do in your life. You just get to go there mm-hmm and be exactly who you want to be and have a really good time with people who feel the same way that you do. You know, not everyone is into science fiction or comic books or fantasy novels or anything like that. And even though those are kind of in the mainstream these days, you can still get kind of weird glances out in the regular world and you're not going to get anything like that at Dragon Con. Um, Not to say that, you know, there aren't crappy people everywhere you go. Of course there are, but, um, I feel safer at Dragon Con than I feel a lot of other places. And I know that if I need something, I can ask someone and they're going to be nice to me, you know, and, and I don't think there are a lot of places that you can really say that about. So yeah, I guess really just how I feel when I'm there is my favorite part. Was that the question? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's bad. <laughs> Uh, you, 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 that was a great answer. Uh, no matter what the question was, uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, Denshi, what about you? I'm gonna have to agree when it when it comes to like the whole aspect of Dragon Con, because for me, I love just like being able to see all the different people that I don't get to see, but probably once a year at Dragon Con. I love the overall just at the atmosphere. And what I really love is the creativity aspect of it because let's let's be honest, what other convention can you go to where you have an entire group of cosplayers dedicated to a pattern of a carpet? <laughs> I I mean, yeah, I mean I'm I'm a part of the carpet cult, so I mean I know, but like I've just I just love how everyone's so creative with their individual costumes and how the much of a variety you see because you can see a little bit of everything even stuff that's not mainstream. But for me, I mean I mean I mean I've I mean I've been going since I was 19 and I'm 29 right now. So if and I I, I love I love it as in, I love it and I love everybody else who I love pretty much all my friends who go there. It's really hard for me to really say but it's Dragon Con is like a real important convention for me because I can I can put all my creative spins on my outfits and then I bring them out and people really love them and it's been and it's like a way for me to bring a creative side to the forefront so I can you know show people all the crazy stuff that I can come up with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Darren. Uh, ditto. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, um, I, I, it, it is everything that everyone has said it is. I, I think for those of us who are, have been going to cons for a while, it's also a place to just relax and chill amongst our folks. And I think that while we've seen cons grow really hugely over the last decade or so, get really big over a short amount of time, I, I think those of us who were like OG nerds or whatever you want to call us, um, we value the con as a place to meet up with our friends who back in the day before Facebook and Twitter, and we could stay in contact all year round. Uh, a lot of us, you know, didn't do that back in the eighties and the nineties because there was no easy way to do that. So we only saw our friends at a convention. So you might pick up the phone and call long distance to say, are you going to this con? So, so place I'll meet you there. 
And that would be your conversation. And then you'd meet there, you know, three months later and say, okay, I'll see you again back in Atlanta in another three months. And that was the whole conversation um, after the con was over. So I I think the cons are the best place to go to get your geek on in a completely safe environment as much as humanly possible. It's a place to let down your hair and have some fun with your fellow freak flag flyers. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. No shame. (laughs) Mike. Well, everyone said it really well. And, you know, it's interesting because like I've been to, we've, I've been to San Diego, I've been to Emerald City, I've been to Baltimore Comic-Con, and I always feel like people there, there's really good cosplay, but nothing beats Dragon Con. It always feels like Dragon Con is where people bring their A-game to display, to show, and it's just awesome. And you could see anything. And that's one of the things I love about it. Each year I'm shocked at things I'm seeing from the guy who was just wearing a lay around himself. To literally. literally. I, had, I was trying to cover <laughs> William's eyes at that time. And then to some of these elaborate armors and people who look are walking around in full fu- functional battle armor or Iron Man or, you know, wingspans that are 10 feet across it's just it's just awesome to see and i love every second of it and i'm one of those people who walk around and take all the pictures it's even easier now that i have you know on the phone the cameras are better than some of the digital cameras that are out there and i just love doing it and each person i take a picture of i say thank you and great job that's what you should always do is you know be respectful to these cosplayers and be you know these people put in so much work to their costumes from the people who dress up in cardboard boxes to you know full get-ups it's just it's just amazing and everything and i i'd love it and i appreciate every single one of you and, and, and I do too. And, and, and yeah, that's, uh, I've, you know, every once in a while I've heard, you know, at other conventions, people, uh, various people complaining about, you know, uh, that it's been invaded by, um, customers or it's become a cosplay con now. It's not a comic con anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've never really adhered to that at all because, um, you know, when I, when I went to my first Dragon Con uh, 26, 27 years ago, something like that, um, uh, I mean, I noticed the costumes right away. I was impressed by them. I was amazed by them. And every single year, it's just my um, my thoughts about it have just greatly like improved um, because it gets bigger and better every year. There's more people. The costumes are more impressive. Um, you know, to just go through one of the habit trails, it's amazing because you never know what you're going to see next, you know, and it, the, the, the level of costume and cosplay that comes just that you see that, you know, that comes by you, uh, as you're walking by, uh, and you're walking around is just phenomenal. Uh, and, uh, you know, everybody's doing it because they enjoy it. They're having fun. Um, they're celebrating, and uh you know they're socializing it's just a really good thing um all the way around so uh i appreciate it and i appreciate dragon con for for being the inspiration for all these folks so uh thank you guys so much for being on the show and sharing we appreciate it very much uh we'll be right back and we'll close out the show Do you know you could take the Dragon Con report with you wherever you go? Heck, we're even now up on Alexa. Hey, Alexa, play the Dragon Con podcast up on iHeartRadio. Playing the Dragon Con report from iHeartRadio. Playing the latest episode, the 2020 Dragon Con report, episode two. Howdy, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the 2020 Dragon Con report. Now, how cool is that? Remember, the Dragon Con Report can be found wherever you find podcasts. See you at the show in September. We are the Cigar Nerds Podcast. Do you like cigars? Great! We've reviewed cigars while talking about movies, TV shows, 
science, and pop culture news. What? You don't like cigars? Great, because we also talk about science, movies, TV shows, and whatever's going on in the news. It's what we do. We smoke cigars, and we know things. Find us on CigarNerdPodcast.com. We're also on the ESO Network. And so we draw a close our fourth episode of the 2020 Dragon Con Report. A big thanks to everyone who joined us uh, this month, uh, starting with Raven. Thank you so much. Oh, it was a blast being here again. Uh, where can people reach out, find you online? Um, I'm on Instagram as Raven Masters, R-A-V-Y-N Masters. And it's also the same uh, for my TikTok handle, actually. Um, if you're interested in TikTok, I use that as a way to get more comfortable in front of the camera instead of behind the camera. So it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to have to figure out, I, I don't know what TikTok is. So <laughs> it's like, it's like Vine. If you remember Vine, it's basically I the same. I kind of remember Vine. Vine was like there for a minute, right? Yeah. And then it went away. yeah. Basically the same thing. Okay, so. cool. Uh, Denshi, what about you? Where can people find you? Um, I have, uh, well, my name, the uh, name is uh, Denshi Pool, and I use the same name for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And I've I recently been on TikTok for only about three months now and slowly getting there, but I've been enjoying the app. So if anybody wants to literally see Deadpool, either get choked by Darth Vader or a bunch of other crazy duets and all Deadpools, check me out. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And, uh, and Joseph, thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Where can people find you online? Uh, for both uh, Facebook and Instagram, it's uh, chameleon underscore cosplay and effects. And that is chameleon with a K. Gotcha. Cool. And we will have links to all of that in our show notes so that people can reach out and, uh, and, and see you. I'm sure even if they can't, if they're not, if they're listening to you and they're like, I'm not sure if I saw that person or not. I'm sure once they reach out, they'll have seen you guys in, in costume. Um, so thank you so much. Um, and a big thanks to our station crew. Uh, thank you so much, Mary. It's good to see you again here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so pleased to be back. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, you know, for those, where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mary Lou Who Blog. And I'll occasionally be on Twitch at Mary Lou Games. It's been some time since I streamed, but who knows? Uh, yeah. And I'm on TikTok, but I, you know, I don't know if I want that to be public knowledge yet because <laughs> I just don't understand it. Okay. Yet. She's not a kid like she <laughs> likes to let people know. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, thank you, Darren. Oh, you're welcome. Any old time. Uh, I know we've got a couple of shows coming up uh, that we're recording with you on the Air Station One podcast. I, I have uh, heard that I need to discover a who, a what, and a where at some point very soon. <laughs> I think we've got a who done it. There, there, there's up, a right? there's a teaser, right? Absolutely. Going on there. Um, other than uh, Earth Station One podcast, where can people find uh, Legion of Substitute Podcasters, where we talk about all the DC Legion of Superheroes goodness. We just celebrated our 600th episode. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. Been going since man. 2008. Once a week. It's pretty That's insane. Amazing. It's pretty insane. That is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I thought I thought five hundred was insane, yeah. but uh we'll just have to call whew. them longevity boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please keep calling me that. I like that name. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we cannot do any of this without the help of Director Faber. Thank you so much. Oh, dude, it's my pleasure. I'm the guy who hits record. And I just wanted to warn people out there. I am going to be experimenting a little bit this weekend and I am going to be creating a new drink that I am calling <laughs> the orange dreamsicle. Ooh, I have a recipe for that. I do too. And it's going to be fun that I've been experimenting <laughs> with the mixtures. And so we're working on that this weekend. It's supposed to be rainy here in Georgia and we can't really go anywhere. So you why not make the, alcohol? You can go to the liquor store. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So along with my apple pie, I will be having bottles of the orange crush or apple orange creamsicle. What if gotcha, you mix the two gotcha. together? Well, I, Ooh, yuck. Oh, no. No. 
no. offline <laughs> orange no 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 that's an xtc no. song <laughs> uh I, i'm i'm not sure about taste mike but in terms of potency i'd probably give it to darren's recipe Oh Just, yeah, damn straight. I, I <laughs> not after it. you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Darren's recipe is the only one that made me black out ever. But Good. here's the uh, thing: I was moving, and I didn't want to take bottles of booze with me, so I just put everything in the recipe. And your point uh, is, <laughs> got me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we try to cover all we can with these uh with these episodes but to keep up with the latest news please check out the official dragon con website all their social media outlets uh again all the tracks are active on facebook various social media outlets as well uh we here on the dragon con report can be found on facebook twitter google plus stitcher itunes spotify and even iHeartRadio. we want you to be part of the discussion so please feel free to reach out to us And be sure to check out the Amazon link at the top of the ESOnetwork.com site. Again, it doesn't cost you any more to purchase your stuff, and it really does help us out a lot. We have a Public store filled with all kinds of cool designs. There's a link for that at the top of the ESO Network page as well. And, of course, thank you so much for all your support with the ESO Network Patreon page. Oh, all those links also are on the new DragonCon report page, too. Excellent. Very cool. And if you have not checked out the new page, Mike's done a lot of work in getting that up and running. Thank you so much, sir. That looks great. Episodes going all the way back to 2014. That's amazing. I can't believe we've been doing it that long, but uh, there it is. Uh, Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Mike Gordon, and it has been my pleasure. Take care, stay safe, and we hope to see you at the con. Peace. has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.